Well, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has restrained the federal government from implementing the February 10 deadline of the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes to stop being legal tender. Three northern states, including Kaduna, Kogi and Zamfara, had an emotion ex parte filed on February 3rd, pray the apex courts to host the CBN Naira redesign policy. Now, a seven-man panel of the Supreme Court, led by Justice John Okoro, in a unanimous ruling, granted an interim injunction restraining the federal government, the central bank and commercial banks and others from implementing the February 10 deadline for the old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes to stop being a legal tender. Now, as the Naira redesign policy bites harder, the scarcity of the new notes continues to disrupt business activities in markets restaurants, banks and major sales outlets across Nigeria. But the state of the economy vis-a-vis -vis the Mara Crunch and its effect is our focus on the show. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. First off, the Lagos state government says 27.3% of its entire 2023 budget, amounting to 482.6 billion naira, will be spent on modern infrastructure. Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget Samuel Igube announced this at a press conference in Alausa, Ikeja. Uh, let's take that report. This briefing paves the way for further analysis of the Lagos State's 2023 budget by officials led by the Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Sam Egube. Christian Budget of Continuity, Egube said it was prepared to continue the good works of the Babajidi Sawunlu administration. The Commissioner explained that 13% of the budget is allocated for provision of affordable and world class education healthcare and social services to make the system accessible and affordable for the teeming populace. The aspiration is that Lagos will have reliable and sufficient infrastructure that meets the needs of a 21 century city. The state is totally committed to ensuring that we grow our stock of infrastructure in transportation, in education, health, technology, food processing, and sports, amongst others. Egube further gave a breakdown of the budget analysis. We have allocated a total of 552 billion in human capital development, representing 31% of the total budget. Included in this is the budget for education of 157 billion, health, 149 billion, our personnel cost $228 billion and various other social interventions of about $18 billion. The Commissioners for Health, Education, Finance, Transportation, Works and Infrastructure spoke on areas that affect them. We intend to improve government services because government revenue is not just about taxes. When we improve government services, government can charge on its uh, services you know, to the people, and people will be happy to pay because they are getting value for money. We are planning to continue to invest in technology in schools. We are planning to continue to build up our science labs, uh, uh, sports facilities, and so on, and to continue training our teachers. Projects like the regional road will still continue, and we hope that by the grace of God, we should be able to finish that end of this year. Um, projects like um, Agriki Shao will also try to round up that. The 1.76 trillion Naira 2023 budget is made up of 1.020 trillion Naira for capital expenditure and 748.097 billion Naira for recurrent expenditure, including debt servicing. The total revenue dependent budget is estimated at 1.418 trillion Naira while the deficit funding requirement is 350.411 billion naira. So welcome back. In the midst of the operational challenges being faced by small businesses, especially in rural areas, a survey showed that point-of-sale transaction charges jumped 400% in most cities across the country 
last week. Now, the impact of the CBN policy and its attendant chaos have frustrated efforts by many Nigerians operating in the nation's cash-dependent informal economy to do business, make payments, and enjoy certain services. Uh, Chevron Shobitor is a business advisory, financial, and customer experience consultant with 25 years working experience in various sectors of the Nigerian economy, including banking, ICT, manufacturing, oil and gas, and hospitality. He joins us now on this discourse. Uh, many thanks for joining us, Chevron, on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. Follow me. Good evening, viewers. Okay, let's start with you, Shegu. How have you been faring concerning uh, cash transactions around your locality? Um, well, I mean, I think I, I would be the wrong demographic to <laughs> explore <laughs> in All this right. regard because, you know, long ago, long before um, this policy, I had gone cashless personally. Mm. Um, and I know quite a number of people in my um, circles have also done the same. So I rarely pay for anything. With cash, you would really find me with more than maybe 1,000, 2,000 naira of cash at any point in time. You know, um, you know, because there are so many other ways of paying for almost everything, including paying your barber, your organizer. You know, you, you can pay with transport. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not affected. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just being honest. But, um, but looking around me and looking at you know the people around me um, and the experiences that we've seen. It's, it's, it's obviously been a harrowing experience for Nigerians. It's terrible. It's been terrible. Uh, people cannot have uh, access to the money that they have in the bank. And somebody jokingly said that uh, for the first time, they now understand when accountants write cash in bank, cash at bank, mm -hmm. and versus cash in hand, uh, that they now know the clear stark difference. Because mm -hmm. you can have money in your bank and start to debt in Nigeria. You know, and that's, that's where we are now. So, so we're in a crisis, really, and uh, we hope that the government can resolve this as quickly as possible. Oh, all right, uh, Shago, one question uh, that is uh, on the mind of most Nigerians is uh, about uh, you know, making payment for the littlest of uh, transactions. You said that over time you have gone cashless. But in as much as you have, some people are saying that uh, they go to the open market to buy simple groceries uh, and uh, the market woman is saying that uh, uh, she does not have a bank account and she cannot really accept um, transfers. And others who have um, bank accounts are actually uh, asking you to pay for the POS uh, fees, which have almost uh, gone high as much as 400% in the past week. How do you explain all of this? Um, I, I, you know, um, I have to take an unpopular stance, Justin. I really have to, because I think that much as this situation is creating a lot of heartache and pain for ordinary Nigerians. But, but I think it also has to be said that Nigerians um, can be very notorious with embracing change, with embracing regulation, even when the regulation is good. You know, this cashless thing that we're talking about started way back in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Um, was it 2012? When the CBN first started the, the pilot scheme in Lagos and Abuja, you know. Um, and so what, what, what have people been doing, you know, between that time? We're talking eight, ten years ago, right? Um, and I tell you, you know what? Um, no matter what you're trying to buy, Justin, no matter what you're trying to buy, you can pay with transfers and POS transactions in this country today, regardless of what it is, um, including buying, purchasing things in the market. Including, I think the only exception are low-value transactions like bus fares. You know, so how can you transfer money to pay a bus conductor, for example, um, and a couple of other things like that. But pretty much, I think 90 to 95 percent of the uh, transaction, the, tra the average transaction set of the average Nigerian can be conducted electronically, but Nigerians have refused to adopt. I think I, I would use the word refuse because the process of opening account is has been overly simplified by the banking industry. You all you need is to present yourself, and they'll take a passport photograph, they'll take a picture of you with their own phone, with their own cameras, and they'll give you an account number. So I think in as much as things are very, very tough for, for people, we also need to remind people, you know, let them go and open accounts. Let's let's do it. 
and then let the system fail, and then we say, oh, we're trying to do transfers and it's not working. But are people even trying? We have to move our country away from this um, heavy um, uh, dependence on cash. It, it's not good for us. All right, Shego, I understand the position that you have taken. Even um, Greek uh, stakeholders are also lamenting about uh, the impact of this cash crunch on this sector. Do we have elections in less than two weeks, uh, and uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, wasn't the news, uh, you know, and he, uh, that's uh, Yakubu, and he was saying that uh, the cash crunch is also affecting, you know, their own uh, processing of the election, and, uh, as it were. So if uh, an organization that is as organized as INEC can complain, don't you think that um, the CBN should have given um, a bit of a buffer, as it were? I mean, look, don't even get me going with the issue of the CBN and uh, how this thing has turned out, because I'm, I'm, I'm extremely upset. Um, I think that the CBN, and I've said this time and again in the public domain, that the CBN has not covered themselves in glory at all with regards to this, the implementation of this good policy. Look, the policy is good, but the implementation has been shambolic. The implementation has been has been um, ha, ha, has been disastrous. You know, let's let's be honest. Uh, the time frame that the central bank gave ab initio was they they set themselves up to fail. You cannot do a, a currency redesign and swap the entirety of trillions of currency notes in circulation in a 90-day period. It's impossible, and that's what we're seeing now. You know, so I think that what has happened is that there has been an unfortunate mix of monetary policy and politics, and that's where we're where we are. You know, because I don't understand why, if they wanted to swap currency, maybe to prevent both buying, that they couldn't have started earlier. You know, than they did. You know, so so it's all. I, I, the CBN hasn't really done well. I next say what they're saying. Of course, they have a point because there are certain parts of their processes that will have to be by necessity, um, um, are transacted with cash, you know, so that obviously they would also be affected to a certain degree, but, but I think, you know, that, that problem is probably not uh, at the top of the list of problems we have with regards to this cash policy. I think it's just that the average Nigerian is, is going through um, a terrible time, you know, just going about their normal daily, day-to-day -day living. It, it's been terrible for Nigerians, and the government, I keep saying, the government really has to do something about this. All right, still talking about the impact of um, this um, cash crunch on Nigerians. Uh, the Association of um, Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria, that is Amban, uh, is in the news, and they are lamenting the Naira scarcity. And they said specifically that 80% of POS operators are out of business as a result of all of this. How do you react to that, Shego? I mean, look, these are the things that, again, the CBN simply didn't um, take into consideration when they were rolling out their timelines. I, I keep saying that the policy itself is not the problem, it's the implementation. Um, yeah, they're absolutely correct. And, and the evidence is out there. You, you, you can see it with your own eyes, you can touch it and feel it. You go to the average POS operator, it's either they do not have cash at all, or that they, they don't have enough to service the demand that they're currently facing. You know, so clearly, uh, you know, business is suffering, the economy is suffering, uh, business activity has been stunted significantly in the last week and a half. And um, I think that we're going to see a, 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 maybe um, a slight impact of this, you know, on, on GDP numbers. I, I won't be surprised if this impacts uh, the, the GDP numbers for, for this quarter, for example. You know, so really, the CBN didn't think about this thing. They didn't think it through. Um, they didn't look at the entire um, logistic chain, right from their own vault to the last mile of ATM, either ATMs or POS operators mm -hmm. or over-the-counter cash withdrawals by, by customers. Um, it, all hope is not lost. I think that the CBN can still uh, ramp up their efforts to distribute the currency, assuming that they do have those notes in their custody, assuming that the notes, adequate number of notes have been produced by uh, Nigeria uh, Security Printing and Meeting Corporation. You know, so if they have enough notes, then, you know, I think within the next week mm -hmm. or maybe two weeks, they should be able to ramp up their logistic operation, find creative ways of getting this cash 
um, in people's uh, pockets, uh, you know, through banks and POS operators and all of that. All right, uh, Shago, I, I want to believe that uh, CBN uh, is surrounded by economists and uh, money market operators and all of that. They should understand how it actually works. I don't know. Let me just put it in a lay term. Shouldn't they be aware of um, the exact amount of money on the average that Nigerians should, uh, should be spending or should or, sh uh, or do spend? Because I don't understand how they have come out with a new policy. At the end of the day, even the banks themselves are claiming or alleging not to really have this new note. How come? What exactly is wrong here? You know, you know we, we, we really don't know what to believe anymore. And um, we live in a society where um, impunity is, is a major part of our culture as a society. Um, it would appear from the evidence that is available to observers that the CBN has provided um, the, the volume of cash that they intended to provide originally. You know, so their intention was to mop up about uh, 2.5, there about trillion naira that was out of circulation and bring it in. Um, and then because they were you try to use this policy to drive the cashless uh, policy, you know, and encourage people to go electronic, their intention was to not release that same amount back into the system in new notes. You know, so but what appears to be happening is that the notes that are being released by the CBN to the commercial banks are not getting into the ATMs and are not getting paid over the counter. They're ending up right back where the old notes were in people's bedrooms, in people's toilets, in you know, in, in, in private vaults, in people's houses. And when I say people, I mean politicians. Mm. You know, so it looks as if what we are having, you know, what's playing out right now. Is, a, is, a, is an unfortunate mix of um, poor planning, poor implementation on the part of the CBN, and um, uh, let me call it sabotage on the part of the political class because of the election that is coming up very soon. You know, so it's, it's really, really unfortunate that at the end of the day, the people that are suffering and bearing the brunt of all of this, you know, is the average Nigerian like you and I, uh, sadly. Uh, you know, so I think I think that's what's happening. I think that the politicians, you know, have, in, have played a major role in the crisis we have on our hands. And I want to say, like I said elsewhere this morning, I'm calling on the president to be firm and to be strong, mm. you know, in, in calling out these people. This culture of impunity must stop. We, 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 I think people that are connected and that, that understand what's going on know where these monies are. We can bring them out. But it will take some serious, strong will on the part of the president or maybe the federal government to, to, to achieve that. All right, uh, it's still Business Insights on Plus TV Africa. We still have uh, Shago Shokriton with us, an economist. Uh, we will take uh, a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be looking at um, how prepared is Nigeria for this online transaction? Because uh, over time, uh, a lot of people are complaining about um, bank apps not working. Uh, in a moment, we'll be right back. Don't go away. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight on Plus TV Africa, and we have uh, Shego Shobito with us, uh, an economist, and we are looking at the Naira Kron scarcity of uh, the new note uh, that Nigerians are actually feeling the harsh impact. Uh, Shego, the issue right now is that most people are complaining about uh, this making transfers successfully, even the bank apps are seemingly having issues. Are we putting the cart before the horse as it is? Um, no, I, I don't think we're putting the cart before the horse. I think that the horse has been sitting very well placed right in front of the cart for eight years. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, the horse is not uh, dragging the cart along <laughs> fast enough. All right. <laughs> to use your analogy. All so right. so what, what's happening is, in my view, and, um, and I say this as... Um, in many respects, an industry insider, um, is that the banking industry has a peculiar problem. Then Nigeria as a society has a, has a not so peculiar problem. The Nigerian society has infrastructure challenges. Uh, we've got challenges with power in particular, and we've got challenges with data access, um, broadband penetration, um, and all of that. 
Of course, these things would have some sort of a bearing on the capacity of the financial service providers to meet the demand um, that this this policy would place on their on their networks, on their infrastructure. However, the banking industry, I must say, you know, um, um, have have had this uh, uh, shall I say tendency to to seek to maximize profit um, and minimize cost center, even if those two objectives would impact on either customer service or on operational efficiency. So what we have today is that um, banks, and it's not limited to just the banking industry, I mm. think that a lot of service providers in this country, including, for example, the network operators, mm -hmm. you know, the telephone network operators, what they tend to do is they, they invest as little as they possibly can to maintain the minimal level of service quality that they can get away with, right? Such that as the, as the pressure of usage on their networks increase, they in, increase investment marginally to cater for that increment in the pressure on their infrastructure. What that does is that your networks are constantly and consistently operating right at the at the edges of 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 um, stability so all it will take is just a little stress and a little push in terms of additional demand on those services for the services to collapse so so the banking industry has not done enough in my opinion mm. in ensuring that the infrastructure that drives electronic banking is robust enough and has adequate redundancies built into them to ensure that they don't fail, that the number of failed transactions is limited. The banking industry needs to do better, mm. and they will not. So I have had cause to say that the central bank is failing woefully in its regulatory authority um, 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 res responsibility in dealing with this specific problem. In the area of customer service and in the area of infrastructure um, uh, 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 capacity, the banks are not doing enough. So what we're now having is that the Central Bank of Nigeria is trying to drive people away from cash into electronic transactions. Mm. But the capacity of the infrastructure that the banks have invested in mm. is inadequate to carry it. So now you are beginning to see a greater incidence of failed transactions. I have personally experienced this. I told you earlier that yeah. I've been doing um, transfers and electronic uh, transactions and using my ATMs and all that to pay for yeah, services for years. Hmm. But in the last week and a half, I've, I've experienced a significant increase in failed transfers and failed transactions. They still right. work, don't get me wrong. But okay. the, the failure rate has increased because the demand of the services have increased. All right. So the bank needs to do better. All right, uh, Shago, uh, in passing, you talked about um, how the impact would be on the country's uh, gross domestic and product GDP. Let's uh, be specific and talk about the financial services sector because uh, uh, some banks are not really opening to customers uh, to transact them over the counter. Uh, some banks' uh, machines uh, or their terminals have been um, vandalized. How do you see uh, this whole transaction or this whole policy on the GDP of the financial sector this quarter? Yeah, I mean, it's not just the GDP of the financial sector. So certainly, um, like you said, I, I, I spoke with um, some of my uh, banking um, service providers earlier, early last week. This was last week. Today's Wednesday, mind you. This was about Thursday or thereabouts last week. And they told me categorically that they couldn't open their bank. They couldn't open their, their banking hub to customers just for fear of being assaulted, mm. you know. So that's one week ago. Now imagine the volume of transactions that have been lost as a result of, you know, their inability to open for services. Imagine the volume of transactions that have been lost as a result of the fact that they cannot uh, meet the cash withdrawal requests or demand from their customers. Mm. Imagine the volume of transactions. Now, when you now look at the multiplier effect of that across 
uh, you know, other sectors of the economy. Mm. What you basically have is the economy has kind of ground to a halt as far as the informal economy is concerned. Oh. Of course, at the top of the ladder, large corporate organizations, you know, and uh, high net worth individuals, and maybe whatever we have left of the middle class, yeah, they're still, they're still transacting their merry, merry way along. Um, but when you factor in the fact that it's been said that 60% of our entire economy is probably run in the informal sector, then you will, you will understand how impactful this would be on, right. on the entirety of the economy. So, uh, so yeah, it remains to be seen. We'll see the GDP reports and, and we'll know how this has gone. All right, thank you so much, Ashed Ushokbiton, for your time. We do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, the, um, uh, the Supreme Court has actually given Nigerians some extra days. We'll see how that plays out, and uh, uh, we'll give you more updates um, as the, dates, uh, the days uh, go. Well, that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. See you again next time.